everyone. Welcome to Acres of Clay. Today I'm going to be talking about cover crops and how we plant, why we plant, and some of the pros and cons for cover crops. We have all of our corn off except for one field that we haven't harvested yet, but since we're still waiting for that corn to mature a little bit longer, we are busy planting our cover crops. And before we start planting our cover crops, we like to put down manure. As you can see, we were hauling manure. One of the reasons for putting a cover crop over um, a field that we've already put manure over is because cover crops can actually um, hold the nutrients in the soil, when, especially when you're hauling in the fall and then um, we get a lot of snow or heavy spring rains. A lot of that manure can get washed away if it doesn't have something to bind to it. So the cover crops can actually hold the manure, hold the nutrients of the manure into the soil instead of letting it get washed out. Cover crops are also great for water filtration as um, a lot of the time, especially like in the spring, or even in the winter when we get heavy thaws, water can just run off the field if you don't have something holding it in place. It's the same with um, the manure. It seems like if you don't have a cover crop, the, the water will just run off the field, um, especially if you don't have just flat ground, which here we don't really have flat ground. Um, and so it will run away and you lose a lot of your um, nutrients that way and you lose your moisture, whereas a cover crop will actually hold the moisture in and the moisture will go down into the ground instead of out into the ditches. Another pro is soil erosion. Um, cover crop holds the soil in place and it doesn't erode. The field is less likely to erode if it has something growing in it um, during the winter and the early spring. For, and for us, we, we really like something growing in our ground or something planted in our soils at all times. Um, it's just very beneficial. It also is great for the good, um, the good bacteria that's in the soil. Um, the bacteria that's in the soil need something to feed off of and the roots of the, uh, the roots of the cover crop are great for feeding, um, good bacteria that's in the soil that is needed for the next year's crop. Cover crop also mellows out the soil so that you don't have such clumpy soil clods. Like some some soils are, not all soils um, are really clumpy, but here uh, where we're at, here in Michigan, on our soil, it tends to be more clumpy. So um, the the cover crop helps mellow that out. It also helps to break up compaction. Um, a lot of the times when we're driving across the field with a semi or tractors, it will compact that soil and a cover crop, the roots will break through that um, compaction and help loosen up the soil that way too. So Kevin is spreading rye. This is cereal rye that he is spreading um, on this field. And for most of the cover crops this year, he is doing rye and ryegrass mixture. That Those are the 
cover crops that we will harvest in the spring, they will um, be feed for our cattle. Uh, but let me just show you what it looks like because it just got a little shower of rain so the ground is a little bit damp now. All these little specks that you see are all little ryegrass. So he spreads it with the fertilizer spreader. No, this is just rye. Um, he spreads the rye with the fertilizer spreader and just broadcasts it. And then he's going to come in with the drill, the grain drill, and then he will drill in rye grass so that doesn't get broadcasted like the rye does um this gets broadcasted then what we do is hook up to this this is called our packer and this kind of just packs everything and packs down any rocks but it also just gets the gets the soil over the seed he's just about done i think here i might take up the drone and show you what it looks like um, up above. This year we're putting down several different species of cover crops. So we're putting down rye, that's cereal rye, rye grass. We're also putting down a clover, and I think that's it this year. We like to mix it up a little bit. So some fields will just get rye, some will get rye and rye grass mixture, and some will get a clover mixture with rye and uh, or rye grass. And so. Some of that will be harvested for feed for our heifers and our cows this in the springtime. Some of it will be used as a, like, called a green manure where we plow it under and that will bring nutrients to the soil also. Um, and then some plants, like the clover, is going to put down nitrogen. It forms its own nitrogen, so that will help build up the nutrients in the soil as well. There are a few cons towards cover crop, and one of those being it can steal moisture if you have a really dry spring. Um, it can steal the moisture out of the soil. Uh, and another one would be you can't get in the field. Say, say you have a really wet spring, 
and you can't get in there to um, plow under that that cover crop or get the cover crop off and then that cover crop grows and grows and grows and so then you have a lot of plant matter also some people just like to be able to get in their fields early in the spring and not have the hassle of killing it off plowing it under and taking all that extra time where you could just be planting it can terminate time in the spring if especially if you have a wet spring now it's also time consuming in the fall because some people are done with their harvest. Some people work their ground up in the fall and that's all ready for spring. Some people just let it set until spring. So they're done working. Um, for us, we're still, we're planting. So it is time consuming. We're spending a lot of time in the field yet, um, working the soil. We haul the manure and then we, um, we work that manure in the soil and then we come in and plant. Sometimes we have to pack that down, especially when we just broadcast. We pack the soil to make sure that the seed has soil covering it to give it a good um, foundation. Um, so it is very time consuming and some people just don't like to mess with that or hassle with it. So there's a lot of pros and cons. We find that the benefits outweigh the, the cons um, by far. We have the time, we have the uh, means, we have the seed and so we're going to plant it. It's also a crop for us come springtime where we will harvest off a majority of the crops and it will be feed for our animals. So yeah, that's the reason why we plant cover crops every single year. I'm sitting in my kitchen salon. Actually, this is my dining room, but today Mackenzie's doing my hair. So the next time you see me, I hope to look different. How different am I, I gonna am look? not making you look different. I am enhancing the beauty that you already have. Ow. Oh. Just concocting some nasty stuff to put in my hair. Whatever, come on. Full of chemicals and everything. And uh, so, yeah, we're about to to do this, cover up some gray hair. Oh, yeah. And the noise in the background is my dehydrator. So I'm dehydrating some tomatoes and peppers and so that's what that noise is. If you can hear us, hopefully you can hear us. I'm sure they can. All right, let's get this slop done. She can kick it. There you go. We're not gonna do anything major, just so you know. Are you sure about that? I don't know, she has all kinds of ideas. I'm putting green in her hair, I can tell you that. Ooh. And by the way, it is my birthday, so yeah. Woo she thinks she needs to help me because I'm getting older. What? Welcome to Mackenzie's salon. It's called the Mac Shack. The Mac Shack. It's where all your dreams come true. Hair dreams, hair goals, hair wonders. Don't mind the mess over here, but uh, that's my mess. Yeah. This is what I look like so far. Oops. We have the alien from outer space. Thing. It's been one hour, so she's going good. So this is the last foil. Let's see what she's doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see what I do. It's my mm -hmm. special touch. It's, it's your own. Oh, secret. Just secret. Yes, ma'am. I don't really know what she's doing, but she's got some ideas, and I just said do whatever. Oh, there goes that veil. Bail. Moving the bull around, and so he, uh, <laughs> over there. what? He, uh, is having a little too much fun right here. Nice. Oh, 
with the girls. Switch them around a little bit. Keep them, keep them occupied. Change up the scenery. And be loud. Time to bring the cows in from pasture so they can get milked. The grass is really growing green and tall in the pasture here. It's nice and tall for the girls. And um, we've had some really warm days um, and some rain, so that makes for good growing conditions yet this fall. There's always one way to the end of the pasture that waits until you get there before she walks towards the barn. You ready? And there they go. Paper. Y'all went out for a while? Okay, you're waiting for me, huh? Watch out. Everybody is gone tonight and since it's my birthday, nobody made me a cake. So, um, I didn't really know what kind of cake I wanted in the first place. So I decided I was going to make myself some donuts. Um, so what I did is I have them over here on a pan. Um, I don't want to touch them just yet because um, my oil, which is right here, on the stove is not hot. I'm waiting for it to get to about 350 degrees before I drop in my first donut. Now these are just going to be plain donuts and I thought to myself that I could have made like a pumpkin cake or a pumpkin bar because I had some pumpkin but um, my thought pattern switched this afternoon and I thought I could just throw some pumpkin in my bread dough and we're going to try and make um, pumpkin yeast donuts so that's what I have right here I didn't really measure the amount of pumpkin or anything I just threw a big scoop in to my recipe and then I added a little bit of pumpkin pie spice actually two, ta two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice to my bread dough oh, and I'll show you what they look like and I'm glazing these as well so I need to make the glaze because I glaze them when they're still warm. So it kind of runs all over. And, um, yeah, it's really good. I will bring you back once I have these fried up. So here they are. They're not the prettiest donuts in the world, but they're sure going to be good. Um, I put a little bit of pumpkin pie seasoning right in with the glaze. And I think it's going to add to the flavor. So that's my birthday dessert.